What up, people? I want to show you how to be super mega frenzy ultra kill chain epic in Call of Duty, alright? I'm sure you've seen this spot used before. It's a standard and required spot for your typical Nuketown spawn trap, but I'm going to show you how to make it the only spot required for a spawn trap, alright? Any simpleton can win a gunfight or hold a choke point, but I can teach you to conquer an army single-handedly and with the intent to maximize your own glory, to secure justice for the Republic. Deliver thine enemies to the forsaken land and your allies to its promised alter ego. If utilized properly, the benefits of this one-man spawn trap are tremendous. On the personal side, you gain a fuckload of XP really easily. All this footage is from the double XP weekend during Nuketown 24-7. Alright, I recommend you spend your next double XP weekend enacting this attack plan. Every time you get back into this position, you can drop some sort of multi-kill. At a four-man, it's 1k XP, I believe, and I think it goes up 250 XP with every man in the multi, so if you hit that ultra, which I bet you will at least once, that's 2k for a medal that you earned in about 15 seconds. Now, with double XP on, that number jumps to 4k or 2k for a four-man fury kill. Holy smokes. Not to mention, this is the easiest way to drop ultra kills and kill chains if you want to unlock the titles or showcase that shit in your combat summary, right? It's also a fat stat pattern. Fat score per minute boost, fat KD boost, so long as you don't take a lot of deaths traveling to the spot. And then, of course, there's the tactical in-game benefits, okay? So, you see all these ultra kills and kill chains? Nine kills will generally mean you've killed everyone on the enemy team at least once, half of them twice, so you, by yourself, have taken the entire enemy team off the map. This is going to give your whole team free roam over the entire map. They can plant bombs, cap flags, or set up in their own spawn trap slash camping spots or they can just get out of their spawn if they're getting pounded in their own spot now eventually obviously they will kill you uh, the enemy that is from their spawn or you'll have to reload uh, but you'll still generally earn your team a fat amount of time to get their shit together because not only do they have roughly five seconds where you're shooting but when you're done shooting the guys that you just killed aren't going to give a shit about anything but finding you and killing you which means your teammates and the objectives are safe for the extra three seconds the enemy is hunting you and they will kill you this isn't a strategy for high streaks, okay? I recommend the UAV combo and like a lightning strike. If you really want to see mass rage quits on the enemy team, drop an ultra kill with your gun and then drop another one with a lightning strike. Booyah, bitch. But the point is, these guys are going to know exactly where you are and they're going to come out of their spawn shooting, tossing nades, swinging at you and throwing everything in the kitchen sink at your ass as quickly as possible because they hate you so much. And I will go into how you can survive most of their counterattacks, but keep in mind, it's still going to be a dogfight, you know? The more you do it, the better you'll get at it, but I would say even then, half the time, they will take you out before you hit the five man. And even if you hit the ultra kill or the, the kill chain, eventually you will have to reload, and then you're fucked, okay? Simply put, this is a massive, glorified kamikaze, right? First one must assess the weapon, alright? It has to be the LMG. The important thing you have to remember is to run quick draw stock suppressor with primary gunfighter. That is the setup I would most highly recommend for this particular venture, but there is some wiggle room. Like you could replace the suppressor or quick draw with big ammo or target finder or whatever because the idea is once you ADS you're not going to come out of ADS, which obviously would make quick draw less important. And the suppressor is useful, but the truth is when you're killing these guys again and again five feet from where they spawn and you're in the same spot, it's not exactly going to be a secret where, where you are, right? They will find you. They're going to know exactly where you are. However, the major benefits of the suppressor is that it's going to take away that muzzle flash, and oftentimes that muzzle flash will be the difference between a fury and an ultra kill. You know, it's hard to keep on aim when there's fucking fire blocking your vision every every bullet, right? All right, and the other thing about quick draw on the suppressor, it's going to make it much more convenient to actually get to the spot. You know what I mean? Step one is fighting your way to the enemy's spawn, and that's generally going to be the hardest part. Once you get into position, just aim and shoot, and you should be able to, at the very least, drop a triple every time. All right, That's what I'm going to guarantee you right now. If you get into this spot, you drop a triple every time, but the tricky thing is getting into the spot. So the LMG is a must, and I would say it has to be the LSAT or the MK48, and the stock attachment is also a must as well. If you want to op out a quick draw suppressor, that's your call. I don't recommend it. Do it if you want, motherfucker. Now, the trickiest part like I said, is going to be getting into position. There's no clear-cut and dry guaranteed successful way to do this. You're generally going to have to fight your way there, but if done properly, you can have high rates of success. What you want to do is hug the side of the map that has the BDOM flag on it, right? Because that's the side that both of the spawn trap positions are on. Hug this side of the map so that you don't have to watch your flanks and move forward. Safest bet is to stay aim down your sights, and that's one of the reasons you put stock on your LMG, alright? Stay ADS and advance forward with your LMG. You're not going to have to worry about reloading or anything. 
Just keep moving forward. If you see a bad guy, shoot his ass. If you see multiple bad guys, don't let go of that trigger, baby, and just don't stop moving. All right, think of yourself as a tank moving through rubble. The idea is that you're just plowing things out of your way. And this analogy is important because if you stop moving, if you get bogged down in a gunfight and caught out in the middle of the chaotic clusterfuck that is Nuketown, you're going to get ran over or stuck. All right, the act of moving into position has to be executed quickly and aggressively and in one fluid motion. All right. And there is some risk. You have to accept you might die during your aggressive push into position, but that's okay. If you die, try and try again. It will work, and the payoff will make up for the deaths. I promise you that much right now. You get back there and drop a kill chain. Who gives a shit if you die three times in the attempted position? You know what I'm saying? All right. Now, once you're in position, make sure you have a full LMG clip ready before you turn the corner and start shooting. Once you've started shooting, there's no turning back. You will fight until you die or run out of ammo, at which point you will also die. This is your jihad, bro. Make it count. Your actions in the following 10 seconds will determine the magnitude of your success. I recommend holding your breath. Once you start shooting, you need to start moving. The person you kill is going to spawn in the backyard and turn the corner immediately. Aim down sights at the spot you just were. So you need to be in a different spot. There are basically three positions that you want to cycle through. Position one is clipping the corner of the house. Position two is strafing further, strafing further into the enemy's backyard, right? Position three is going to be prone clipping the corner of the house, right? So let's go over these one more time, right? Position one, you're clipping the corner of that chimney on the house. Position two, you're strafing. That is aim down sights, moving further into the enemy's backyard to your right or left, all right? Position three, you've moved back. You're going prone, clipping the same corner of the house. I recommend doing them in order. That is position one, position two, position three. Your goal should be to get three kills from each position. So you start off clipping the corner, kill some motherfuckers. And as soon as they die, you need to start strafing uh, further into their backyard. Don't, uh, don't come out of ADS. And don't let go of that trigger, motherfucker. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Pound it straight, all right? The mofuckers you just killed are going to come out swinging, putting fire down on the corner of the building that you were just at. But you will catch them off guard because you're deeper in their backyard. And as soon as you drop some more mofuckers, you need to change positions again and get back to that corner and go prone. This, again, should catch them all way off guard, right? They're going to come out swinging at you, shooting in the backyard, not to, and you're going to be covering the, you're going to be clipping the corner again, all right? Not to mention you have great cover there, all right? You drop some kills from this position. If you still have bullets afterwards, get up, move back to position two. The trick is to keep them off guard. They don't know where you are, so they don't know where to throw their grenades, flash, their flash grenades or the bullets or whatever. But you will know exactly where to shoot because they will never stop pouring out of that backyard. You know what I'm talking about. Now, if you're feeling really ballsy, you can actually move from position one or position three into the enemy's kitchen and then come out the other door. That's high risk, high reward. If you pull it off, it'll catch them way, way off guard. You can kill anyone you see and then move back into your previous position and take them all out again. The tricky part is they is, is if they see you move into the kitchen, you're fucked because they can shoot through the walls or just ADS on the other side where you pop out. And it does take some gun skill. I'm not saying this is easy, but I do think everyone is capable of doing it. And that is how you enact the Nuketown one man spawn trap. Please remember to rate the video before you go. I know you're about to click away. Just rate that video, please, all right? It means a lot to my ass, all right? And hey, you want some more dope ass Call of Duty 140 character tactics? Follow me on Twitter. May the force be with you. This is Batman, signing out.